Oh, boys and girls, we are ticking off a bucket list thing today. Uh, this is Bletchley Park, which yeah. as former computer science teachers, you'd think we'd have been to before, but neither of us have. Nope. This is where all the code breaking, Enigma machine, origins of computing stuff is. We've read a lot about it, and we? we've done a lot. Yeah. We've seen all the films about Turing and all those things. And yeah, yeah but we've crazy. never seen it. So we're in Milton Keynes. It's right here. We're going to go and have a little nose around. So as soon as you get in, it takes you into a little uh, cinema room. But it's, uh, it's an old black and white movie, and it all seems very familiar. But, we um, snuck out before the end because there's a motorbike here. A motorbike called Hazel. Do you need that after that? I think so. And now we are in. And because we've not watched the movie that everyone else is watching and we're the first group of the day, there's not many people in the bit that we're in, which is awesome. So we can have a proper no nose around and be lovely and obnoxious and not upset many people. Ooh, typewriters. Apparently that's an Enigma machine. It's like a typewriter. I figured they'd save it for the end of the journey yeah. rather than showing us it up front. That's what we came well, for. There's stuff to decipher there, so I think you've got to smash it open or yeah. fig figure out the puzzle about how to get it out of the box and then solve the puzzles. Is this how Editor Chris puts words on the screen, do you reckon? I guess so. Okay. We need to get in one that has graphics so we can shoot things up a bit. I mean, it does explain what it is at the bottom there, but I can't get the angle of the camera to read it anyway. There you go. This one explains it using touch screens which is my way of Type X. didn't do anything so this is my kind of museum I get to touch things there's lots of these interactive touch screen things around the place that you can have a little look through which the camera doesn't pick up very well but um, they are cool lots of interactive stuff I'm not reading what you're supposed to do, but... Cross out the X's. And oh, there you go. Really, uh, move on. It's very clever. Fun interactive things. So that first little bit was like a, an introduction slash visitor centre thing, where you can also, there's a cafe, there's a gift shop, which we'll check out on the way back, and a place to pick up a multimedia headset thing that you can wear to go around and get a tour that way, which, as you've seen before, we saw it at the Beatles Museum and various other places. Whenever we're offered a multimedia headset, we tend to decline. No way. Don't want dirty headphones on my lovely clean ears. Um, or you can book on guided tours if you don't want headsets on. Guided tours are set at certain times throughout the day. We also declined that. We were offered a map so that we can have a proper look around and know what we were looking at. We said no to that also. So eventually we found the door because we weren't sure how to get out of the building. Twice we have thought, we, we thought we were locked in the cinema room until I said, Kev, the door's there. And we actually tried doors and didn't get out until we realised where it was. And just then we thought we'd done the whole thing and we were like, that was a bit quick until I saw another door. Yeah. Um, so we've made it outside. Well. It looks like there's more to do over here. But because we've declined every offer of assistance <laughs> that we've been given, yeah. um, we're not sure what's over there, how to get there or what to expect, which is cool. I like to come and discover a place you. with an open mind. I have no idea what we're about to see, but I imagine it's going to be excellent. There you go, the National Radio Centre. Ah. Let's go to the NERC. The though, yeah, that sounds, sounds like they're the ones who dob you in. So very much, I mean, you can tell this was a, a military base because it still very much looks like one. These buildings here look very much. I keep expecting Captain America to burst out of one of them with uh, yeah. military base stuff there, military base stuff here. That is a big TV aerial on the top of that building. And we're gonna go to the National Radio Centre and have a little mooch around. See, this is actually quite interesting. It's a, a proper history of radio communication with a timeline up there showing you at what point various things happened so the 1920s is when we got well 1922 europe's first regular broadcast so i feel like that could have been commemorated somewhere europe's first regular radio broadcast was 101 years ago I should have made a fuss about it last year yeah probably did i mean when was the last time you listened to the radio i suppose but 
it gets more and more snazzy and advanced the more down here we get until we get to the 1990s where apparently history stops with sky well, the podcast came out didn't yeah. it yeah which ruined everything the electromagnetic spectrum that's where video finally killed the radio star at this end here that's what the sky dish symbolizes and those people back there loved that gag as you can hear okay as a as a nerd this is quite cool in here it's got loads of stuff about how radios work all the history stuff over there and over here there appears to be a little radio situation which is nice so here we have the sign for the intelligence factory which is over here somewhere well, we've made it into the intelligence factory do you feel clever already don't you absolutely i do the man told us to follow the arrows which i think is probably the first intelligence test this is a bit so, yeah, although that, yeah, that's a very good point. Which arrow do we follow? This Are they my legs down there? This feels like a bit of a puzzle, doesn't it? Let's, uh, let's go right. Yeah, I follow the arrows at eye level more than the ones at foot level. So I imagine, there you go, there's another arrow there. It's going back to the entrance, he's going to be there This is taking us to he? the toilet, I think. <laughs> And we, oh, we've actually failed the intelligence test. I think it's one castle in Greece. There were sites for the WC. I didn't know what a WC was. So I kept following them and then they were a toilet. My parents were just like... <laughs> yeah. Right, we have a massive touchscreen Game of Thrones wall by the looks of it. Which Sheepdog is going to plot us something. What are you plotting? A route? I'm not reading it. I'm just pressing. Fair enough. There you go. Oh, you got that wrong. You are but once again, as we've already found in a couple of areas in here, lots of very cool interactive stuff. This would be a great place for a school trip. As a former computer science teacher, I'm wondering why I didn't ever come here on a school trip. It feels like somewhere I should have come multiple times, like every year. He's not listening. Oh, yeah, you are right. It wouldn't be good to come here on a trip. Five years I was a computer science teacher in secondary schools. Never came Forget here. all that. We've got a big interactive table. This looks like a fun game. Mini Metro. It does look a bit like it. Can I push it and see some, watch something happen? Yes, I can. Oh, I'm going to be here for the next couple of hours. You go do your thing. I'm going to play with this table. There was so much of this interactive stuff in here. It's really, really cool. And over here, we have a big memo wall. I wasn't exaggerating, that's a big memo wall. He's now playing on the table. The decision I was trying to pick, he wouldn't let me pick. When I picked the other one, he went, good decision. That was a good choice. I'm learning some things about how people in the past lived. For example, um, the catering at Bletchley Park, they, uh, they served nearly 25,000 meals per week, but only two and a half thousand snacks. I find it very hard to believe that there's only one snack for every 10 meals served, I couldn't live in a world where I'm only snacking like every three days. And what, one snack every three and a bit days is bonkers to me. I don't know how they did it. But on the flip side of that, they did do a lot of high teas. I don't really know what a high tea is. So the next section is a temporary exhibit, the art of data, making sense of the world. This, this looks a lot more colorful, it is not. It's pronounced data, as you well know. Can this move? I do like a spinning globe. Oh, yes. It literally says, please turn the globe carefully. And you, you're there spinning you it like need, a maniac. You need to read that and tell me what it says, and then I will do what you say. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. <laughs> There's lots of cool stuff in here, but I particularly like a 3D population density graph. That's London. What do you reckon these are next to, like King's Cross and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I imagine so. It's very cool. D-Day, which is in here, apparently. So have a little look, shall we? Begins in four minutes. Okay, so this is a uh, a show thing, is it? Okay. Yeah, so it looks like there's some kind of show program film thing in Go there. Go to a cinema area and watch a yeah. film about D-Day basically. Which we're not going to do because 
I don't have to put my normal glasses back on. We're about to head back outside and I'll need the sunglasses again. <laughs> so I think we've got code breaking huts this way, which does sound awesome. Because we came in here completely blind, I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but it is so much bigger than I wasn't expecting. Because, yeah, they've got ice cream and hot dog and waffle kiosk. All these picnic areas over here, there's more exhibition stuff over there, the mansion. Then there's more exhibition stuff over here. The stuff we've done so far has just been over in this bit. They say on the website, you need three to four hours to get around it. For once, I think they might actually be right with yeah. one of those things. I think obviously, we're doing it a bit quicker than we could be, but I bet if you stood and watched everything, and oh, yeah, definitely. you'd be even longer. They told us there's also going to be a flyover plane. One of the bombers is flying over in about, what, three, four hours? Yeah, so we, we won't, won't be, be here, that, here when that happens, but there was a something you can see. flyover, yeah. weather dependence. So there's lots of cool stuff going on here. Well worth a visit. Plus, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, the entry ticket, I'm just making sure it doesn't have a secret code number on, the entry ticket, becomes a free annual pass so come in once you can come in as many times as you want for the rest of the year same as it was at the space station in leicester that i went to recently i like the fact that i'm collecting annual passes <laughs> if i ever find myself with nothing to do on a day i've got so many places i can come back and attend you could drive around them all on christmas day one year and just see which ones let you in i'd like that very much we're getting a uh, a waffle i want a waffle hell yeah definitely waffle time now it's time for the bomb breakthrough we're not going to break the bottom, are we? It's going to be like a megaton. I'm not sure. Ooh. More Enigma machines. There we go. That's what an Enigma machine looks like, folks. And there we have the bomb machine, which is a big code cracking thing. Yeah. Not an actual bomb. Yeah, I was going to say that they kind of broke bomb copyright there, didn't they, a little bit? <laughs> It was moving and ticking until I started filming it. I think it's a little camera shy. I don't think either of us know what he's doing here. But. No, I do know now. I was going to try and spell out Kevin for you, um, but it's checking what letters are there. The more I turn it, it's suddenly like, oh, hang on, that is the letter F. And then... There we go. There you go, boys and girls. That is what I assume is the mansion, which I don't know if we can go in. I don't know if there's anything in there. I'm kind of here for the code-breaking nerdy stuff, less so the afternoon tea and mansion stuff. Half the size of your house, isn't it? Yeah. If you are planning a day trip, there's a cafe there, does stuff like fish and chips and sandwiches and pies and things. So you can go and have any of those things in there. We, I mean, we're not. We're going to go and eat somewhere else afterwards, probably. We're after eat, so we have to look after our bodies. Exactly. I'm not going to eat that muck. I'm on a salad and a protein bar. Yeah. <laughs> So over there we have the chauffeur's hut. I'm not sure what the chauffeur's hut is, but as we approached it, that man in a suit just shut the door. He peeped through the window as well, because yeah. I thought maybe he'd miss, he didn't see us and he'd shut the door and then thought, oh no, they're coming. But he peeped through and then he carried on with what he was doing. Yeah. He's made sure we can There's a lot of people in there. I don't think we're going in there. Even the chauffeur's anonymous. Yeah, I don't feel very welcome in there. We're addicted to driving. Church bells dongling. I don't know if that's here. If there's a church, a church hidden, I haven't seen a church, but it doesn't mean there's no bell. If I've learned anything from Minecraft, it's that you can steal the bell and put it outside your own house. I mean, it could be a code that you're supposed to break. Maybe. Maybe you get a free sausage roll or something if you go and tell them the code. I think we've completed the loop though. We're going to head back down this way ahead of us there because we've kind of come around here and then around to here. So we'll just see if there's anything else up there. But I think we might have looped around everything, which even for us and we've not really read anything we've not watched any of the shows we've not stopped at any of the refreshments places we've still been in here a good 90 minutes or so it's a lot longer than we normally spend in anywhere like this it, that shows how good it is mm. there is a lot of good stuff here and it's it's um it's high quality as well like they'll have big screens that are like floor to ceiling but they'll have two or three of them in the same room uh, lots it's, of touch lots of play yeah, yeah it's not reading, it's not yeah. like thrown together nonsense it, there's very clearly clever. been a lot of money spent on this place very and scientific as well isn't yeah it? it's, it's very quite, snazzy yeah like they're 43 and it's not inaccurate or outdated it's quite up to the date up to yeah stuff. like i said before if you're a if you're a teacher looking to plan a school trip even if it's not specifically to do with computing I would, I would absolutely Maps, do a school definitely. trip. Yeah, a STEM trip would yeah, be ideal here. 100%. Get all your different departments, throw in a few quid in, stem it up big time. Even get history involved. Cooking. Exactly. Chauffeuring. 
All of it. We don't talk about the chauffeur area. Moving away from that. That guy does not like us at all. Someone else has just gone in. He opened the door for them. He shut the door on us. I hope he didn't see me spit in there. <laughs> <laughs> he probably saw you spit the first time, which is why he shut the door. So bearing in mind we didn't get a guidebook or do any of the media, multimedia guide thing, we're just looking at this as a kind of checklist. And I think, looking at that, we have ticked everything off. So Except the chauffeur's hat. Yeah. <laughs> which, I mean, it's just a guided tour assembly point. We don't need a guided tour. Ah, oh, stupid chauffeur's hut. Goodness me. Of course, we can't leave without checking out the gift shop. And this looks like a, uh, a pretty sizable one. Yeah, there's lots of just secrets and codes. Nose over from the, uh, from the doorway. There's a lot of cool stuff here, including a big secrecy poster, which might get a secrecy poster. What you got there? A submarine? Submarine, but I thought it was like a metal die cast one and it's just a plastic. Uh, uh, I might get a Morse code set. Oh, you put baking powder in it. Excellent. Lots of books. They've got uh, code breaking beer here. Got various items of clothing. Shoot dogs buying a submarine. Yeah, Why not? You put baking soda in it and it dives like a submarine and then it flies back up. And every time you pop some in it, it'll just act like a submarine going up and down. Excellent. Yeah. You can get a hat look and an umbrella. Yeah. We're going to need an umbrella later, now you said that. A silk tie. What I'm not seeing is any uh, any socks for Anna. Get some um, cufflinks. Rubber ducks are everywhere now. We're seeing them all over the place. Until last year when I went to the rubber duck shop in Amsterdam, I don't remember seeing themed uh, rubber ducks as a thing. Across the they world. are taking over the world. Lots of various beers in here. Jigsaws, jams. What else have we got over here? A little metal bicycle puzzle, which is quite snazzy. Various posters and books, loads of books. If you like reading, this is a gift shop for you. And then more booze and scarves. Guess what? More books over there. Instructions for British servicemen in Germany, 1944. They're, they'd be quite interesting. Some good little gift things in here, which I think would be quite cool for people who are into this kind of thing. I'm not necessarily into it, but there is uh, some spy stuff down there. I always wanted spy gear when I was a kid. Stuff about aircraft and military shenanigans. And then more puzzles. Lots of different types of puzzle, including maths puzzles. It's the first time I've been one of these. I feel like I want to actually get stuff. What are you buying now? Spy sunglasses. You put them on and you can see behind you. Good, yeah, didn't um, you have them as a kid? All in a cup. How much stuff are you buying? They're all cheap. Picture choice for me. All in a cup because I want to see the kids try and do it. But <laughs> Ollie will love them. Ollie will think they're great. <laughs> they won't fit me, sadly. They're for children. But um, I think you'll find them fascinating. Nice. And that brings us to the end of our trip to Bletchley Park, which was awesome. Yeah, I really great. enjoyed really that. Enjoyed it. Lots of cool stuff in there. Very interesting. It's the kind of place that probably need to come back and spend a little bit more time in but got the annual passes now so I literally can yeah. come back and spend a little bit more time in there which I will but for now we will say goodbye if you did enjoy this video please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on this is just one of several videos coming out from Milton Keynes this week in Milton Keynes yeah, week MK so make week. sure you subscribe for that and of course we've got the main best thing from Milton Keynes video that'll be coming out on Saturday and then the companion podcast on the Sunday all here on the channel you're not going to want to miss out on any of that and I tell you what right now Bletchley Park is going to take some beating Hell yeah for now thank you very much for watching cheers everyone bye